because I think when when people are thinking of starting, especially I think for a lot of our listeners, they're more like you, right? Full time corporate job, yep. and then like they got some excess income. Then the bad itchy, right? Uh, they see a uh, few hundred thousand. Everything the, itchy. Ah, uh, the itchy. Then like, wow, maybe ah, uh, hey, three of us start a restaurant together lah, or three of us start. But right, right, that's yeah. the that's the narrative. Yes, don't do it. That is the <laughs> Stay narrative. Away. That's the narrative. The yeah. bad itchy. Why are we in studio today? <laughs> <laughs> we'll talk about the pros ten, and cons of ten both. Reasons think, uh, to do ten reasons not to do FMB. Yeah. Ten reasons to do FMB. Ten reasons to do FMB. We got ten reasons to do FMB. <laughs> There's no ten reasons if to do FMB. If you're a billionaire, you want to be a millionaire, you can lah. You can lah if you're already there lah. <laughs> if you're a billionaire and you want to be a millionaire, <laughs> you can. That's what he yeah, said. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, if you feel like donating money, yeah, right, exactly. Right, yeah. Oh true, my, true. oh my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> you can donate money to CPF, donate money to your employees, yeah, yeah, donate yeah. money to, mm. to the uh, Singapore, yeah, 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 to, to, the, uh, to yeah, customers, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. All, all the good stuff, exactly, all the good yeah, stuff, yeah. okay? So yes, today we are in studio to talk a little bit about how to build a successful f and right? Although, I, although I, I look at you laughing because I know you're closing down your yes. shop, right? But there's always a lot of lessons to learn in the process. Yeah. So it's not just always just about copying the successful person yeah. because there are a lot of rules of the trades that, you know, sometimes people don't even realize it is what it is, right? Yeah. So uh, before we roll, maybe you want to introduce yourself, you know, what do you do and all that jazz. For yeah, the audience. sure. Happy to. So my name is Yi Chen. Uh, I used to or am currently in the final stages of closing down um, a cocktail bar called Jekyll and Hyde. Uh, so the bar itself has been around for about 10 years um, you know, I took over the business about five and a half, go, almost going on six years ago. Uh, we did a bit of expansion, which we can talk a bit more about later. De-expanded, uh, shrunk, um, and then we're now closing the business. Um, um, on the on the other side, I have a day job in finance. That's always been my uh, main uh, source of income. Mm. Uh, FMB has always been my main source of uh, expenses. <laughs> 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 yeah. Okay, okay. And yourself? My name is Park. Uh, I am the second gen uh, chef owner of Pagisore. The business itself has been around since 1989. I took over pretty much during the peak COVID period. That was 2020. But I pretty much grew up around the business, you know. So a lot of the older folks, when they come over to the restaurant, they'll re- remember me as the kid that was running around, you know, pretty much child labor la, back then, you know, so running around <laughs> and I was like still in primary school. You sure school. you want to say so, that? So when did your kid become child labor? Yeah, yeah. About 11. Okay, okay. So, okay, yeah. so that's about uh, eight more years. Okay, okay. All right. yeah, okay. Good, we'll, we'll note on that. Yeah, 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 we'll, come, we'll come by. Yeah, we'll come by. And say, hey, your kid. hey, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, third generation. You yeah. know the thing about being a being a kid and working in a restaurant when you're that young, right? The tips are fantastic. Oh, because they look at you like, oh, what? Oh, you're oh, so yeah. cute. Yeah, that's, that's the thing. Oh. Okay. Wait, but is it poor thing or is it so cute? Or is it just both like both a little bit of both? Yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah. But actually, Pagi, sorry, when I was growing up, obviously I didn't know him. La. I, didn't, uh, yeah. I mean, we just went there as a family to Makan. Uh, uh, yeah. uh, uh, okay, so it's been around household yeah. brand. Where everybody knows you. Yeah, mm, it is I mean, the thing is. is we've been around in the CBD pretty much the entire length yeah. of uh, the 30 odd years. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So but you guys also have had a couple other outlets before, which I think that's where yeah. we used to go dine at too. So we, we had, I think, a couple of outlets, like I think in the, we had another one uh, in Tanjung Paga, mm-hmm. and then at one point we had one in Jurong. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that was when we thought it was a good idea to expand. Obviously, I think everyone who has expanded has yeah. either struggled to stay open. Okay, not everyone. Like, there are other concepts, obviously, that have uh, expanded, and I think they're doing just fine. Uh, but I think it takes a certain type of uh, concept to so to loaded. There's so yeah. much to unpack. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. There's so much, so much to go. Okay, but 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 let let's start with the high level, right? So sure. a lot of people. I mean, I got you guys in studio because a lot of people are thinking about it, right? You know, okay, I have a decently good paying day job, you know, and I want to like create a side hustle. I want to do a restaurant, you know, like everybody have that that thing lah. Like do a cafe, do a restaurant, do a bar, you know. Like somehow I don't know who planted this shit in people head is this, is this the moment we look like, don't do it <laughs> <laughs> the moment you hear a good paying day job yeah, hey don't do yeah, it yeah, yeah. <laughs> but but you get you, you get where I'm coming from right like well, a lot I mean, of people think like that yeah I mean I get where you're coming from right but it's good that you've got two sides of the story today right uh, because that's, I guess that's more me and then Park is really doing it full time right and mm, I think mm. if, if you look at it from different perspectives and how a business should be run. I mean, I don't think it's just necessarily just FMB, right? But it's just generally how you manage a site hustle. It's how operationally intense a site hustle might be, how much time or effort you have to put into that. And FMB is definitely something that you can't uh, let your eye or even your hands off, I guess. Mm, mm, mm. So so the answer is don't do la. Don't, don't I, I do. think I think the thing is, I mean, if you're going to f- your money, there are better ways to do it. Mm, you yeah, know, mm. there's a lot of things you can waste your money on, mm, you know. But yeah. at the end of the day, 
I feel that with F and B, a lot of people they tend to be a lot more focused on the cons, uh, the pros, the good things about F and B, and they tend to like just sideline all the things that can go wrong. Yeah, you know all the problems that come with F and B. So, what are the good things of F and B that you think people think? To be honest, uh, I would think that if in general you don't have a passion for for food or what, that's pretty much the only thing that sustains you yeah. because every day it's long hours, day in day out. You know, you're just facing a lot of people, you're facing a lot of pressure, yeah. right? So, I mean, at the end of the day, if you don't actually love food, and I don't mean, oh, I love eating food. No, you actually don't love dealing with food yeah. and you don't love dealing with people, you shouldn't choose this business, la, mm. you know, right? Because I think people have the the, the idea that it's, it might be easy to right? It's just serving food. I mean, look, <laughs> <laughs> most of the time, the service part is like, a very small fraction of what is happening. You I know? think depending on the concept, right. la, but yeah, yeah but I get where you're coming pretty from. Pretty much yeah. everything else is about like worrying about the food, mm. worrying yeah, about yeah. the people, you know, worrying about how they would look at your food, how they would feel about it, you know, worrying about whether the quality is there, worrying about the standards are there, you know, worrying about SFA, worrying about <laughs> government <laughs> things, you know, worrying about manpower. About COVID. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, you get what yeah. I mean? Yeah. I and get all it. of that worry just goes into like maybe a two-hour service. Yeah, you know all of that compacted into two hours of service, work. and that's the two hour thing that everybody sees. Like, oh wow, you look so crowded, you know. Mm -hmm. But everything else that happens behind, they don't see the prep before right. that. That's, they don't that see where the, the, the problems are. Stuff that yeah. are late, or because they always see what is in front of them, right? And obviously, un unless things are like <laughs> super bad, which I guess has happened before, where you're severely understaffed, or you know, I don't know, water's leaking from the wall, which has happened for us before. Um, shop house, like right? That. Shop house, right? Shop then house are worse. Yeah, yes, yeah. yes, yes. So people always ask me like you know, how did I get into it or why did I get into it? And I always answer, and my answer is it's a combination of negativity, stupidity, and idiocy, <laughs> right? It's a combination of all three because, I mean, to Park's point, it really is being naive, right? About going into a business where you think, I mean, I'm going to be completely blunt about it. I thought that it would be an easy side hustle where I would be able to hang out with friends, you know, it would pay me some money on the side, um, but if I take in that money and I just put it in the stock market, I've done a lot better, <laughs> like, right? And, I, and I'm just like looking at it and like, Okay, I won't swear that, but it's okay. You can. Many <laughs> forms of swear words and all that and stuff like that. I was like, what the hell? I should really have done uh I really should have done that, right? Um mm. but you can't really know that until you do it. La. So I guess I think Park and I are here to warn you of the, oh, the struggles potential <laughs> issues that yeah. you might face before you do that. And I know a lot of friends that um run different concepts, right? And you know, they they have different struggles. La. I mean we so during COVID, I think a lot of the F&B yeah. people all banded together and we still band together. Like right now when I'm trying to sell all the crap up from my restaurant and stuff like that, I just spam it in the group chats and people are like, oh, I want this, I want that and stuff like that. And it's support in both ways, right? One, they need the item, but two, also it's a supporting in terms of buying that. And I think, you know, when we were going through COVID and everyone was going through the same shit where things were opening, closing, open, close, open, close, at least there were people that you could relate to. And I think F&B, for what it's worth, I have I have a corporate job too, right? Um, it's actually one of the more congenial industries where people actually do help each other, which is I think maybe not not that it surprised to me, but I was pleasantly surprised, I guess. That, In what that, sense? Uh, like I have a shop next to park, right? I'd be like, hey crap, I ran out of lime leaves, okay, or something like that. And I'll be like, hey bro, can I borrow like three packets of lime leaf tomorrow? I return you and stuff like that. I mean, there's this inherent like trust where it's just like yeah sure you go take the three lime leaves tomorrow, you return the three lime leaves, right? And 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 I think that's and or you might be like, hey. Oh, okay. Indonesian restaurant cannot cause uh, cannot drink alcohol, lah. So, but if it was an Indonesian restaurant, it might be something like, hey, why don't you go over there to have drinks after there? Or we might say like after drinks, we're like, hey, why don't you go and makan over there? Right? It's a kind of like, uh, let's help each other out kind of thing. Mm, mm, mm. Great, great. Just for context, I used to run a tea house. Oh, that was eight years ago. So okay. we're in the same boat. Oh, now. fantastic. Yeah, so I understand this thing oh. inside out. Oh, whatever you're saying, <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah, I know okay, the kind okay. of struggle. So it's a different concept. Okay, okay, okay. But we're in the same yeah, SFA, yeah. you know, uh, yeah. the fire department, yeah, everything. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, everything yeah. right so so i i get i get what you guys are saying so maybe for our audience right just to kind of help them understand you know like what are the struggles that they're missing out because people all think of it like, right? they always think of this stupid idea that oh people need to eat you know blah 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 like all these like assumptions but what are all the problems that you've experienced so far and then from a business side of things, right? I think we can we can break down to different segments, right? Like yeah. maybe first we start with the concept. Like, you know, everybody have like all sorts of ideas in their head. You know, like what, what are some things that, that you think people need to be aware of? You know, the thing is this, right? It's true. People need to eat, you know. Why at your restaurant? Yeah, why, why, why do eat I your have? food? <laughs> why, why yours? You know, why, why whatever you're putting on the plate? You know, I think people don't understand. It is a lot, a lot, a lot easier to be sitting down as a customer yes. 
yeah. than to be the one that's putting the food on yes, the table. Yes, if you love a cafe, just cafe hop all your life. I mean, if you're looking at how you start an F and B business, I mean, there are a few different factors, right? Location is actually very important. Two concept does matter, but the location ties in with the concept, right? Because if you have a bar in, I don't know, like in the middle of class or something like that, you probably won't get as Why? much footfall, right? Yeah. I mean, if you have a cocktail bar there, okay. if you have a beer bar there, you might get very good footfall because oh, everyone's okay. going there, right? So, I mean, the, the concept tied in with the location matters. I mean, I think, I think secondly, you know, with that, you're also looking at what people want because things change. People in, okay, I don't know about people in Singapore, like people in general are fickle people and they want to try different What's things. What's so unique about Singaporeans that they're not fickle. Yeah. <laughs> no, so in it's fact, like, in a high density environment yeah. where there's just like new concepts popping yeah. up, up, down, so left, right, right. It's always bouncing around yeah, and yeah, stuff yeah, like that, right? Exactly. So, then, so they might eat at Pagi Sorry one day, yeah. then they go to Jekyll and Hyde. You won't see these people for another year yeah, yeah. because they have another 50 weeks of other restaurants yes, and bars to yes, try. Yes, 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 yeah. exactly, exactly. Okay. After so many years uh, of like, I think, uh, looking at the business, growing up with the business and now running the business, I have come to the conclusion that whether or not uh, your restaurant is successful, it's not something you really need to overanalyze. Mm. Number one, your food needs to be fantastic. Okay. Number fantastic th- yeah, is the word, right? Not yeah. good, right? Yeah, like, fantastic, okay. right? Okay. Number two, you just need to be really lucky. I don't even think that location even matters, you know? I mean, this is Singapore. You can get from one end to the other end in like, what, I don't know, 40 minutes? Yeah. And yeah. now we have the train system over the place, you know? So when you overanalyze and then you're like, oh, I'm looking at location, whatever, all you're looking at is just where will your rental be higher? Mm, mm, you know, mm, a lot yeah. of all this cost, right? But at the end of the day, if your food is really good, and people you, will travel, yeah, you, like for people the food, travel for yeah, the food. This is yeah. one thing, right? And then if you open your shop at pretty like nondescript location, you know, something that's not very fancy, but people like your food, yeah. that's where they will go. Mm. But you had a brunch in Jurong. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. Just, just to kind of push that idea a little bit, mm. right? Like, did people go down there, or were you just serving like the Westies? Mm, so pretty much the thing is because our the main shop has always been at Telok Ayer. Yeah. So when we had a shop at say Jurong, uh, we we served pretty much the Westies because then they didn't need to come out. Yeah, yeah. You see, but now I do not have the shop at uh Jurong. They are coming back here. Because uh, this is where they can get the food. Did see? it cannibalize, oh. or it didn't? It just expanded. It actually didn't because I mean. As much as much as uh, Singapore is small, people can travel and move yeah, around. Yeah. But you reach a new target yep, audience, audience yeah, you know, yeah. where uh, they are just within that area. I'm yeah. an Eastie and yeah. I will not go to Jurong. Correct. Mm. <laughs> 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 just for food. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah, 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 simple yeah. as yes. that. The lie yeah. I can, like, the lie I can. Yeah, the lie yeah, is in yeah, the middle, yeah. but, but yeah, no Correct. Jurong. So, so, I mean, the thing is this, right? So, you won't go to uh, Jurong for any other reason. Like, for I mean, I, I stay in the East. Yeah. I'm not going to go there you know, for unless the food is fantastic. Yeah. yeah. If the food is so fantastic that yeah. I'm it's worth a day to treat. go. Yeah, yeah, you know, I'm just going there just to eat and leave. I have not no other attachment there. Yeah. I will. Okay. You yeah. see? And that's what I feel that that's how it is. I mean, in the past, the C B D area used to be a place where because for us we are halal restaurant, right? We don't serve alcohol. You have almost no reason to come for dinner. Mm. Most people they want to have some drinks with their food. You know? So dinner used to be like a one table or two table affair. But nowadays, we actually sometimes we, we can be, get pretty busy, you know, to the point whereby I might have to like ask my staff or rather beg my staff, can you stay behind and help, you know? Because nowadays, people are okay to travel out, you know? They're yeah. like, hey, I'm going to travel to the yeah. right. But they know there's nothing there. They're just yeah. here to eat your food and then they're just going to Which eat. is the mark of a good restaurant, like, Correct. right? Right, right. So people are traveling that there. makes you, yeah. but that is the part that makes you feel like, hey, you know, I'm doing something right because yeah. my food is good enough to bring the people in, mm. right? I don't have to have like a, a, a certain gimmick. I don't have to like yeah. offer a certain discount, right? I don't have to hold noodles and dance. You're coming here for the food. Bro, that is oddly specific. <laughs> uh, yeah. right? Then got the music at the back, right? Yeah. Then put it to the pot, yeah, right? Or well, like, a, I don't know, a beer can in a chicken. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But, you, but you get where I'm coming from. I get it. But it's a bit, it's a bit of a snob. <laughs> <laughs> it's a food snob. Yeah, right? For it's good home cook. I mean, at the end of the yeah, day, yeah. I mean, Pagi Sorry is good... Not I get home, it. Home cooked yeah. food, but restaurant calls. No, yeah, I get right. it. I, I mean, the thing is, yeah. I am, I am not a fan of gimmicks. But let's be clear, it, it mm. works, right? From a capital recycling standpoint, some of these people, mm. when they put the money in, it works to a certain extent. Yeah. It works for a certain yeah. period of time. Yeah. Okay, like so. I mean, I think for the examples that he brought up, I mean, this is very, this is very because, OG go, way of go, doing. Go there because they like 
hot pot overall, yeah, right? And yeah. the noodles happen to be an extra part of it. And they, it's an overall experience as opposed to just like, you know, um, just the makan, right? Mm-hmm. But I mean, like I went to another hot pot, hot pot place the other day. And I was like, oh, actually, this is better quality, right? Uh, and the price point ended up being the same. So it depends on what you want to pay for it. Yeah. But yeah. to be fair, like for example, when we talk about gimmicks, right? There is a difference uh, between already having fantastic food and then doing a gimmick. Mm. Mm. or rather than you say I depend on the gimmick to draw, to draw people, people. Yeah. that's yeah. where I think this, the difference is very clear Yeah, I mean yeah. I, so so it's interesting so um, Holland Village you know they just opened up over there right and it's a dog friendly uh, mall right so I went to a cafe that was a dog friendly cafe so everyone can bring their dog there and it's full Oh my god, I hope they don't listen to this. The food is terrible. Uh. The food is like, really <laughs> bad. Like, it's just like freaking like the sausage, you know, it's a frozen sausage. Fries, you know, it's frozen. Broccoli, you know, you're like, oh my god, this is probably broccoli from the bag, not even the broccoli that you chop and then you steam the right. damn thing, right? So then I was like looking at the food and I was like, oh my god, it's 30 bucks. What the f? I was like, wow, oh, <laughs> damn expensive. And I was like, wow, if this is full, because they were serving a need. They were serving right. a need where people cannot go anywhere else or there are a limited number of places where they can bring their pet indoor, they can actually sit indoor and eat and have your pet la, right? And so then I was just like, will this place last? And I was like legitimate, legitimately thinking about it. And I'm like, I wonder if because they are serving this pet knee and people are taking care of their pets more, they don't really care about the quality of the food. But then to your point, if the food was even <laughs> two times better, doesn't it have to be 10 times better? If it was twice as good, um, dude, I think like, it would be even more packed. I think the lines would be Correct. long, right? right? And so it goes back down to quality because I think there's only so much that you can sustain after a while. Like, I don't want to go back. I'll bring my dog somewhere else rather than go to this cafe where I, I have to I, pay I wouldn't want to, bucks. I, I'll sell my dog. Exactly. Oh, okay, like, I wouldn't do yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I wouldn't yeah. want to pay. Yeah. But, 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 but you, you wouldn't go there. You just go to another place where right. you could do it, right? Mm-hmm. The thing is this. So if let's say the exact same shop, a rival opens next door, yeah same idea yep. you can bring your pets you can bring a I don't know you can bring a turtle or something yeah. like, but much better food do I look like I own a turtle right? <laughs> <laughs> I used to right? oh shit you own a turtle yeah, okay, okay, right? okay, so, okay you cannot bring what? turtle yeah, yeah. you can only bring dogs nowhere yeah. nowhere no, does no, it accept no, turtle yeah. okay. so what, what happens then and I think it should be quite expected that business will start shifting to the other side sure. already. Yeah. Mm. If it was, I mean, that, and that's economics, like if, if, you, if, if all things were equal, right? But that's where like things aren't all equal, I mm. guess. And yeah, so then you have to yeah. look at it from that perspective too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Fair, I fair. come from, I mean, the thing is, I grew up around the kitchen my entire life, you know, mm. and I was trained by uh, my mom, right? So to me, food has always been more important than anything else, mm. right? If I could, I would never renovate my restaurant for like 20 years. Mm. Because oh, I you'll see be one point. of those. Yes. Yeah, I don't the mind heritage my restaurant you're going to. Oh, being so like, cute. Yeah, you Start know. in the 80s, Correct. you know, that type you know? of places. Yeah. Not, Sometimes not, the food not is better purpose. if it looks... Just that I just don't want to spend money yeah, on renovation. Yeah, yeah. I don't mind having like a, a, a house ghost or something yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm not like, hey, you know. Maybe that's my gimmick. Like, I don't know, yeah, right? Yeah. But, but the Ooh. thing is, <laughs> yeah, but the thing is, all your resources goes to focusing on the food. Yeah. Right? People wouldn't come to my place to sit for two, three hours. Yeah. They would just come to my place because they want to eat a good meal and then get lost. Mm -hmm. I mean, I guess a good example would be Zizha restaurants, right? It doesn't matter how dirty the damn place is. If the Zizha is good, people will go. Actually, the dirtier the place, the better it is because the wok is more burnt, the, I don't know, the plates are more chao tao or whatever and so there's more flavor infused into it or something like that, right? So... I mean, that, that is... And if you go like what? You go to KL, you go to all these different places, eating on the street is where you get bought better tasting food, right? I don't know about better quality or better hygiene, but it's better tasting food, right? And, do, and don't forget, you know, it is because of all these things that you spend on, like say, renovations, you know, decorations. Mm. That's why your food gets expensive, yeah. right? But I, for one, I would rather pay for food at a good price, but good food. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. But that's essentially a part of the core product, right? So because de- depending on different people's concept, right? Some people yeah. it's like the food is decent, mm. but the concept also encompasses the experience of the place, Correct. right? So there's a lot to go into the nitty gritty of it. But that's the thing you see. So I don't come from the idea of an experience, mm. right? That is, I, I had a lot of phases. Growing up around the business, right? I had a lot of phases, you know? I had the phase where I start to think like, you know, oh, it's Think about, too much, yeah, yeah, you know, <laughs> oh, it's about an experience. I have to create an experience for the people. When they come in, they must, woo, you know, they must take photos. They must like that, you know, the service needs to be an experience. And then I go to the face whereby it's like, that's all b- Yeah. You know, so I would say that if people were to rate my restaurant, usually from my reviews, it's like ambiance, I don't know, three, you know, <laughs> or, or maybe two, you know, service, 
I don't know, when my staff are in a good mood, five. When they are in a not so good mood, three, you know? But food needs to be a consistent five. Yeah, yeah, yeah. five. Okay. And that's where I think is the most important thing for me because, well, that's the thing you're here for. Yeah. Fair, you know, fair. Right? Yeah. You're not here for entertainment, you're here for food. Fair, right? fair. You can call fair. it an experience or something. I mean, I wouldn't mind paying for an experience every now and then. Yeah, la, but yeah. how tiring would it be to go to every restaurant and, and need have to, to have, have an experience? An experience? But I think that's yeah. why different places serve different needs, right? They serve different concepts, serve different needs. So like, you know, I've, I've always said I'll never go back into f and And if I do, and, and I, I've talked about it, right? Because I think one, I probably will 90% never go back into it. But if I were to do it, you either serve mass or you serve very high end because high end is okay about experience. Mm. Lower end is about volume, okay? I mean, I think when you're in the middle, except for a few exceptions, like maybe say Pagi, sorry, you are stuck in the mid middle and you're competing with everyone who is serving the middle, right? And so then you have Japanese food or Thai food or Italian food or whatever, which is maybe say, okay, now costs are going up now, right? So maybe like 20 or $30 a plate or $15 a plate or something like that. But you know, when you look at it from that perspective, I've always said I will go low end, as low as possible. Because with high end, you you you, you have other problems. You have to hire staff that are skilled. You have to hire staff that have good service. You have to make the place look nice. Everything, all the things that Park talked about happens at a high end restaurant. And so the it moment- needs to the, be consistent. Exactly. You know? So say the maitre d' suddenly disappears or- don't know, your chef gets stabbed by another chef. I don't know, something happens, right? And you lose that element. You're like, fuck, I mean, what, what do I do now, yeah, right? I mean, imagine right, you go to a place, yeah. you're expecting the guy who's dancing with noodles yes. to dance really Noodle, well, yeah, yeah. but then it's just like... And then suddenly it's the three of us doing yeah, the dancing yeah. instead. And then you know, they're was, like, what the hell is this Reggie Ichen and like uh, Park doing with the dancing and stuff like that, right? Whereas, and, and it's also about staff. Okay, so for me, like we had cocktail bartenders, right? So they are skilled. You cannot... I, I don't know about you. Okay, you can't. I don't know about you. I can't. I can make very simple cocktails, right? But it's not like I can go and make like an amazing cocktail, right? It's different, but yes. if I said, can all of us go to a chicken rice shop and cut chicken or chop chicken? Not to say that it's a very low skill thing, but I, I feel that we better could, be clear. Oh yeah, it's not a low skill <laughs> thing, but I feel that the barrier to entry is slightly lower, and that's why you can hire a wider range of people where you can hire people from twenty to sixty, mm. right? Sorry, yeah. At a cocktail just to, bar, just to let everybody know, cutting chicken hard. Yeah, cutting okay, chicken. Yeah. Cutting chicken yeah. is Very a complex. Cutting chicken well. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is actually Maybe a the, skill. Maybe the economic bihun, the pick the thing. Okay, one, la. La. Ah, actually, that, that one is what. different. Yes, yes. If you do um, <laughs> yong tau fu and it's all pre-packed yong tau fu, you just put the thing out and then you can go there. So you do it. Okay, yeah, 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 right? yeah, mix yeah. the thing around that. But I think the whole point around it is essentially, or the point that I'm trying to make is, um, it's barrier to entry is lower, right? Like, I also generally probably would not have a 60 old bartender. Although that might be a gimmick. That would be more of a gimmick at that point. In Malaysia, the there's a really bar, good, right? It's like that. Yeah, it's so yeah. cute. Yeah, no. So I mean like skilled labor versus unskilled labor. I mean, that's again the whole concept that you want to do, right? Because I mean, cafe food, there's two types of cafe food, okay? That is like your hawker style uh, Western food where you are willing to pay 7 or $8 and you get a certain type of cafe food quote-unquote cafe food or you go to Surrey Hills grocery and you have to pay $40 for cafe food right like what's the incremental difference what's the incremental cost what's the incremental experience that you have um, I mean like when I went there I was like oh my god this is damn expensive lah, right and I was like okay the food's not bad but would I pay that incremental amount for that and you have to factor that into you know how people look at it also mm. but from a business perspective how do you kind of factor your cost how do you kind of do your pricing, you know? All, I don't know about him. Stuff. Mine was always 30%. So 30% maximum cost um, for your food and drink. And then, you know, everything else goes into that. I don't know about you. I mean, the thing is this. Of course, there is some percentages involved. Of course, there's some calculation and math involved. But uh, without trying to oversimplify it, yeah. I tend to price my things at what I think I would pay for them. Mm -hmm. Right? Because if even I wouldn't pay for them, then why am I expecting someone else to pay for them? Right? Because my mantra, I mean, the way I teach my staff is very straightforward as well. Uh, if you're going to serve a dish that you can't serve to your family, you can't serve to your children, mm. don't serve the damn dish to customers. Right? Because people are paying money for this. Yeah. Instead of eating at home, right? right? Yeah, right? Yeah. So sometimes, I mean, I have like, uh, customers who are like, you know, they, they come to me because they know I'm the owner, right? So they come to me and they be like, hey, today's uh, fish is not so good, you know? My first question is, do you finish it? They'll be like, yeah, we finished it. I said, why do you finish it? I would have thrown it away. I'll give you a brand new one. Yeah. Mm. Why do you finish it? Because at the end of the day, fact of the matter is you paid for something. You expected freshness. You expected quality. So if there's something wrong with the food, you should tell us. Not finish it and then come and tell me it wasn't that good. You see? Sometimes people just want to be nice, right? Yeah, I yeah, know. But the yeah. thing is, telling me about it is not being nasty. There are people who can be nasty. Yeah, right? yeah fair. So I think it's just that 
there should be some kind of a fair treatment. You are you are a paying customer, right? Yeah. So yeah. a lot of times I do come from the point of view whereby if I'm a paying customer, would I want to pay this price for mm. a certain dish? Fair. So over like, for example, I mean, during the COVID period and, so, and then, you know, where things just kept going, getting more and more and more expensive, there, there are dishes that I don't bother raising their prices because I felt that like any higher and it makes no sense to pay for this dish yeah. anymore. But I know for a fact, people are raising the prices. Yeah. 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 So, but to me, it's like, I don't want to lah. Right, it's not that I don't have higher costs. My costs are constantly going up. Yeah, I, I hear you. I hear you. Essentially, essentially, it's not too different from a lot of other businesses, right? Where you try to model with some baseline margins that you want to know, but at the same time, you want to envision who is your target audience. But I think there are a lot of. I I think most of the businesses nowadays they take cost uh into account like very very strongly. Yeah, yeah. So that's why nowadays, I mean, you will see a lot of food compared to the past. I feel that you don't understand why you have to pay this amount. You know, where I mean, they give you the broad-based explanation that yeah. costs have gone up, so my, yeah. cost, my, so, my price has gone yeah, up. Yeah, so like, the, right. the, the explanation is just, yeah, yeah. you know... Very possible, loaded, right? I like it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but at the end of the day, it is also, I think, a lot of them, they are just like, oh, the other shop went up, I should go up too. Mm, mm. Some lah. I mean, for us, like we struggled to raise our prices because our prices were like high enough already. So at a certain point also, you hit that value point where people, again, don't want to come anymore, right? But then you're also like saying, oh my God, my oil prices went up by 60% or my chicken price went up by 30%. Mm. And you're just like, how the hell do I like balance this out, right? Because if people are used to paying, as an example, $25 for this buggy beef chakwe tail and then you raise it to $30, you know, I think my staff are always like, well, people will come back and eat. And I'm like, well, you can't, I mean, for me also, it's a, you have to try it out and see whether you get an incremental drop of people coming to your restaurant, right? Or coming to your bar because to a certain extent, you have to cover your costs too. So there's a fine line between cost covering and uh, and I guess like keeping your customers happy and survivability. Mm, mm, mm. But essentially, you didn't survive, right? Yeah, so like yeah. you, you shut it down. Yeah. What, what what is the what, what how did it look like financially? Yeah. So I mean, everyone everyone kept going on about how oh your rent must be very high and I was like no actually my landlord was very nice my landlord was very good they didn't raise the rent much even when we renewed our lease I think he raised <laughs> it by like less than 10% like 5% 6% which is very nice because we know other landlords they raised it by like 60% I heard right. someone told me 120% I was like what the I know, hell I know. Right? the, the like landlord that, right? is looking to raise oh, so okay. yeah, yeah interesting yeah. So, yeah. Uh, and so for us it was actually more a matter of revenue going down um, and then obviously manpower costs going up a bit also. I think we were trying to scale and obviously there were costs associated with that. Uh, but I think, you know, things are trendy at certain times, right? Some of them, I think, stand the test of time. Some of them, you know, things ebb and flow, right? And so we got to a certain point where our fixed costs were fixed, but then our variable revenue was super variable and so it hit an inflection point where it was just like losing too much money on a, on a monthly basis. So cocktail bar is going to be a failed concept going forward? I mean, I don't think all cocktail bars are going to be a failed concept. I mean, you have to look at it from two different ways, right? One, if enough places fail, consolidation happens. Then and you if become the last happens, three, right? Yeah, the last one that survives. <laughs> yeah. And if the last one survives, you'll do okay. If he's the last Indonesian re restaurant standing, everyone will go because everyone's like, shit, I need to eat my blacha, my, my sambal blachan somewhere. I need to eat my chicken here or whatever, or my ota this here, right? Um, I mean, I was talking to a friend about it who came over because a lot of the F&B people are coming over to, you know, again, buy some of the things and all that. And I was talking to one guy and, he, and I was like, everyone always has this projection of like things are going well, right? And it's not that they're projecting things are going well. They're just trying to get people to come to their place. Um, and he was like, dude, man, and like dire straits. And you're just like, okay, not that I feel better, but I'm just like, okay, like, I'm not the only one that's like suffering. And I think if you look at the number of places that are closing now, it's also, you know, a sign of things to come because you're not looking at it just from a micro point of view, right? You're looking at it from a macro point of view. What are the factors that uh, play into it? For us, like, I, hypo I have hypothesized everything, right? So it's we did well the, during COVID. It's part of the career. We, well, yeah. I mean, so we were profitable during COVID because everyone was in Singapore. People had to spend money in Singapore and people couldn't travel, right? The moment things opened up, they'll suspect for one month. I think like March or April where, like, wow, you're like, wow, this is up by like 30, 40%. And then the next month, it's like completely crashed because everyone was traveling. The people that could afford our food and drink are also the people who could 
uh, afford to travel. And so if you look at a lot of the fine dining restaurants now, I think they are the ones that are suffering because why the Omakase restaurants during COVID did amazing. 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 Yes. You couldn't get a reservation yeah. three months or four months out. But now everyone can fly to Japan tomorrow. Yeah. I can tell you half of them are suffering and I can tell you half of them will close. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. Because why would I bother paying $300 for an Omakase exactly. meal in Singapore yeah. when I can pay $700 for a plane ticket there then go and pay $150 for the Omakase while having it in an authentic Japanese, uh, yeah. you know, place right yeah yeah well i mean yeah. country i guess but. hey welcome to the financial coconut podcast network i'm your host reggie aka your chief financial coconut and if you are loving what we are creating here like share subscribe share with your loved ones comment in the comment section below and yeah we'll see you for great content on chill swift tfc what about you guys then like when, when you're kind of running your business you know like things like cash flow things like all these kind of business mechanics like what do you what do you look out for because essentially what he said is that mm. his concept uh, is no longer as trendy right and people kind of move out of this so revenue came down and then you know the, the numbers don't make sense anymore right not not a landlord raising price right but but what about you when I mean, you guys stood the test of time you must have gone through multiple iterations whether is it changing your menu line making sure you hold a margin you know hiring well adopting technology blah blah blah, blah all those things right like what are some key factors that you got, you think people need to know to stay relevant in the F&B space. Yeah. But that's the thing, you see. So, again, I mean, I suppose, okay, some people would consider me so-called like a veteran of this industry at this point of my life because I've really been in it for a long time, right? But, again, I think I w I'm past that phase, you know? I'm past that phase of trying to analyze a lot of things, oh. you know? Words like projections means nothing to me. You know, things like uh, trying to, you know, trying to like uh, evolve and adapt means nothing to me. The word relevance means nothing to me, you know, because the thing is, at the end of the day, I think the amount of uh, focus and care that I put into my business goes a little bit beyond uh, a normal uh, circumstance because I see it as a legacy. I see it as something that was part of my life. You know, it's just, it's not like I felt like starting a business yeah. or I felt like starting a yeah, restaurant yeah, yeah. because, you know, I wanted to, a, a Michelin star yeah, or whatever, yeah. you know, it's not a whim. It, it became, it's a, it's a legacy, right? So even if, for example, at some point in my life, I actually have, am not interested in F&B as a career, but I had an obligation because it was a legacy, right? So a lot of the things that I do tend to be because I just think they need to be done. Okay. You know, shifting over, for example... Uh, having to to suddenly change over to delivery mode, mm. it wasn't like you know adapt. It was like you don't do, you die lah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> you know, it, it, yeah, yeah, people yeah. like to use these words, you know. But yeah. I never thought of them that way, right? I just thought of it as again, survival. You're talking yeah, about survival. as if you have options, you know, <laughs> right? Nobody can come out. Why are you talking like as if you can like oh let me not do anything and then one day people will come out to eat again? Yeah, right. Yeah. Let me like uh not pay my stuff for two months, you know? Because at, at some point, we had the option to like not pay the landlords because I think the government yeah. was subsidizing or but whatever. But I think right? there's also like people who pivoted faster than right. others yeah. also. Right, yeah. Right. So I think when it comes to like a, a scenario like that, I, I don't overthink a lot of things. I just look at it from a point of view whereby, okay, so now we got to go to like delivery mode, right? Is my food going to taste good mm, while when you reach the customers? Yeah. How mm. fast can I get it there? You know, who is going to get it there for me? Right, so it, it's a very like reacting to the situation. I think you used to have a uh, um, a bunch of taxi uncles yeah. that were your back yeah. call, right? Like yeah. during COVID. So during COVID, uh, that time I called a friend. I was like, uh, so the taxi drivers were, well, they were out of the job as well, right? I mean, they couldn't work. So I asked, you know, do you guys? Uh, I mean, I could at least with delivery mode, I can still make revenue. I can still have an income, right? You know, but I need to get the food to customers fast. I need to get the food, to, and who knows the roads better than them? Mm. Right, you guys got no income. Why not partner you do each other? Up, like, yeah. You know, it's like a partner up, right? So it started with one, uh, one taxi, and then the next thing I know, I had like I think almost like fifteen taxis. Like, and wait, to borrow taxis from him sometimes, but like, bro, I need a taxi for my deliveries, yeah. right? Because we hadn't built that same level of uh, skill when it came to delivery, I suppose. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So I mean, so it was like it was quite nice to see lah. so at one point I think the other shops in my uh, on my stretch they closed down one by one because I maybe they couldn't they couldn't you know pivot fast enough lah, right so but like on the on like the big days like Hari Raya and all this uh, 
So people look outside, it was a fleet of taxis just like all along the road, <laughs> just like waiting for me to like bring out the food because all of them had to go out at the same time. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. And they were all Mercedes taxis. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, that was the part that was really cool because the, the first friend I went to, the, 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 the mother actually uh, drives a Mercedes yeah. taxi, right? So the friends, the all the khakis. Yeah, 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 so yeah, yeah. she would be the one I'd be like, hey, I need another two caps. Okay, I'll get it for you. You know, then the, I don't know, they use a walkie-talkie or yeah, WhatsApp, yeah. you know, and be like, hey, I need two more caps, you know, who wants to do today, you know, and then they start coming together. La. But it was, it, was a, it was a very beautiful scenario, right? So not only could we help ourselves, we could help an, uh, someone else, you yeah. know? Right, it was a. It, it felt like a. It was a very community kind of mm. situation. Yeah, definitely. but again, there was not much planning involved. I, you, it wasn't overthinking. Mm. You know, oh, I need to be able to get the best drivers in Singapore to do it. It wasn't. It was just reacting. Like I, I have a problem. You have a problem. Yeah. Let's help each other. Mm, you know, mm, mm, right? Mm, mm, so it, it, it's always been that way for me, right? But it might be again, lah, because I've been in it for so long that it never occurs to me to try to overthink things. Mm. It makes you really like a lot of times you overthink things, you miss the core point, you know, the, the main thing that you're supposed to be looking at. You start adding things to it, right? Next thing is like you wanted to build a Lego car, you know, next thing suddenly you're like, you build an entire building and a car park and 20 other cars, but all you wanted to do was this in the first place. You know? Yeah, you fair, overthink things. Fair, fair, right? fair. Okay. And I think okay. your whole point around projections, I think COVID taught us that projections can be thrown out the window because you, you did not know what the <laughs> hell was going to happen like yeah. the next day or the uh, next week uh, uh. or the next month, and, right? And that's the thing, yeah. right? So a lot of people who think it's a good idea to go into FMB, what why do they think it's good to go into FMB? Projections, you know? What do they base their projections off on? Nothing. Nothing. And they right? also think it's cool. La. Yeah. I think I it's mean, a coolness factor. Yeah, la, right? Right. Right. I think there's some cool ne factor like, yeah. to it. Uh, every month, my you business know. will go up by 10%. Or every how do you help you go up by 10%? Yeah, you, yeah. What, what was the basis for that? You know, yeah. or because you saw someone else do, yeah. being able to make that amount, yeah. you think that you can also make that revenue. Why yeah. would you? you know, unless you're selling exactly the same thing. And even then, like I said, there is a luck factor. Then you're cannibalizing business. also on the business. Yeah. Blah, maybe blah, maybe yeah. the customers just don't like your face. It might be, you know, it, it can be such things, you know, that people just, I, I don't like you. Oh, the feng shui here, not so good. I don't, yeah, yeah, I don't feel good here. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah, really yeah. very strange, right? So there is always this, because you're dealing, the problem with F&B, you're dealing with humans. Yes. Yeah. You're dealing with people all the time. And you're not dealing with one type of person, you're two type of person. It's a lot of people. It's yeah. a lot of personalities, a lot of different people. What are some things that you've, you've experienced and you've picked up over time that you totally did not consider before entering the space? In what sense? I guess like in terms of... In the of, business uh, sense, you know. I mean, I get it. Like we already passed the whole like our oh, product must be good. Huh? So we already assume the product is good, right? But from the business standpoint, there's all sorts of things. Like, I, okay, maybe I'll just talk about one thing. Like manpower. Mm. Manpower is a it is very hard, I think, to hire people now. I mean, I don't know. I, I'm fine with doing this. But I mean, the government, ridiculous. I mean, they are considering, I think, now doing a special passes for, I don't know, certain uh, officers because they can't get enough people. So they're like, oh, we can get people from the Philippines and Taiwan and don't know wherever and stuff like that. And we're like, oh my God, why are you not doing this for F&B? You're doing it for nursing. I think there's even one for f the burlesque dancers. I think there's actually a special <laughs> pass for the KTV hostesses. If you go and look at the different types of... Uh, you see the guy, there was this fellow who... You know, you're, when you want to hire uh, EP, you're supposed to list on the on the government website like you, you must show oh, yeah, proof that you yeah. tried to hire, hire Singaporeans, Singaporean, yeah, so yeah. he actually put like a KTV yeah. entertainer or KTV yeah. dancer in the government portal because you actually have a specific KTV license but you don't have it for FMB and the answer that they have is oh because you must give Singaporeans a job and I keep and it, it, it just baffles me because you tell every Singaporean don't go and do this please go be a white collar worker please go and do this then why the hell are you telling me that there are enough Singaporeans who want to do the job, right? And so there's this disconnect where, where everyone in the industry was saying, hey, we need a separate pass in the S pass, please don't increase the amount. I think then you just like sum summarily increase the amount. I think the minimum salary that the, the, the S pass holders have to make. And you're just like, oh my God, you are definitely not listening to the ground. So I mean, aside to the fact that that's a diss to the government, I think holistically speaking, there just aren't enough people that want to do it. And so you have to find a solution to that, whether it's hiring people, but then hiring people means what? Bringing people from overseas. Don't have past, not enough people. And you have to have X number of Singaporeans before you can actually hire more people, right? So how do you actually solve that? And that's not necessarily a solvable problem. 
I've had a lot of people say, oh my God, don't you feel terrible, sad that your place is closing and your staff will have a hard time finding a job? I'm like, dude, the freaking guys all got like 35, 33, 34, 40% raises and they got a job yesterday. They didn't get a job tomorrow. They got a job yesterday because people need people so desperately to work in f and I've always said that if I, for some reason, lost my job, I can go into f and tomorrow. I'll find a job. Pa right. will hire me. Definitely. He'll pay me a few K. I mean, sure, maybe I don't make as much as I do in my day job, but I know I can get a job. But you can get a I job. I can get a job. Yeah. You I can freaking like serve yeah. uh, customers because... It is that desperate in the industry for them. I mean, if you go and look at I'll say all the different shops, especially the chain ones, they're yeah. like, oh, got a sign up bonus. Uh, we will give you like five days a week. Uh, you know, only work eight hours max, staff meal, trips. I don't know, like, right. trip home to Malaysia. I don't know, whatever they the perks are endless nowadays, right? Because they are fighting and for And they that, advertise right? the perks a lot more than like officers and yep. all these like white collar jobs do, right? Yeah. You don't see them advertising. You don't see Google say, hey, you know, come and work for us. Yeah, yeah. Just, these are just things that people talk about, but they don't actually put it out there. You don't see a banner outside Google that says, come work for us, you know, you have this, you have that, yeah, you have yeah, staff yeah. meal, you have a pool yeah, table. They don't say that, yeah. right? Whereas f and banner, banner, yeah. banner, you know, yeah. just to tell everybody, please join us. <laughs> and I think the thing about, second thing about f and is that like, I mean, again, coming from a corporate job, you're, like, you're working with a different group of people with like different um, backgrounds and it's interesting, right? Like you learn to work with different people from all, all different walks of life and all that. And you just have to understand like how to work together, how to, um, surf together uh, because it's 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 a little different, I guess, in terms of how thinking about how you work together, how you manage people. How is it different? I mean, it's different in the sense that generally different issues that, that that they face. I think whether it's at home or whether it's in general, and so you just try to be a bit more um, accommodating or a bit more understanding when it comes to different personal issues they might face. I guess. Yeah, mm. I think when when I got into the industry, and then the the person who sold the bar to me said that. People in the industry, and I guess it's more bar industry in general, will have an issue whether it's around like womanizing or like alcoholism or gambling or whatever. And I was always like, oh, this is BS. Like everyone is a good person, right? And it's and 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 yes, everyone in the industry are genuinely good people. But I think you you do see maybe a few more bad hats. And I and I've and I've had my fair share of experiences with that, unfortunately. I suppose. I think the for me, the local scene when it comes to F and B. The, the key here is that f and jobs, we talk about servers, we talk about chefs. These jobs are generally a choice, but they are never the goal. Mm. No parent would tell the son, when you grow up, you must be a chef. Yeah. You know, no, no parent would say that, in Singapore at least. I said yeah. your mom. La. Yeah. Oh, wow. My yeah. mom did. This one no yeah. choice. This one is a legacy, yeah. right? You yeah, better yeah, yeah, take yeah, it yeah, on yeah, and yeah, carry right? on, so, right? So, I mean, yeah. say for example, but for generally me, speaking, yeah, yeah, I mean, generally speaking, I have, yeah. a, I have a daughter, right? So, you already started seeding the idea? No, I don't <laughs> want her to be left <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. You see? So when I spoke to my mom, I mean, you know, it was like third gen, right? So I told my mom from like day one, I said, I wouldn't want my daughter to grow up into F&B. Hmm. You see? Because I said, why would I want to put her through this? Right? But again, F&B is a, to me, it's a career that is a choice. If she somehow, somehow chooses it, yep. she somehow shows like an aptitude for it, then, and a passion yeah, and then a true go, love for go it. Ahead. Yeah, yeah. I won't stop you. You know, yeah. I'm not going to be like, oh my God, you're going to go F&B clothes line. You know, it's yeah. not going to be like that, right? <laughs> but if, let's say as a parent, I wouldn't encourage her to go towards yeah. F&B. I wouldn't encourage her to be a chef yeah. because it's a very, very tiring job. Yeah, you know, yeah. there, there are jobs that you can make much more doing much less. I mean, I think you also have to look at the overall environment, right? And I mean, I think this may be going into the overall environment of like, okay, so as an example... I'll go back to using a culture bar as an example, right? But uh, for us, our costs are high. Costs in Singapore, alcohol tax is high. So when you buy, okay, so when you get a highball, okay, so a highball is soda water and whiskey, okay? When you get whiskey in Singapore, a bottle of whiskey at the very least is going to be about 40 or $50. Supplier you can say price. That you can buy the, yeah, supplier price. You can buy the exact same bottle of whiskey off the shelf in Japan for a fifth of the price, at $11 versus $50. And they're charging almost the same price for the freaking, uh, the, the, for the drink in Japan. I mean, sure, it's a bit cheaper for some of the drinks and all that, but if you're doing cocktails, the cocktails are the same price. So you're telling me that the margins there are obviously exponentially bigger. I'm going to assume rental is roughly the same. Manpower is actually cheaper. And so then you look at it from the perspective of like, again, why are you punishing yourself in Singapore? You have to look at it from where you're doing it also, yes, right? Yes. I mean, I know a lot of, so I lived in the US for a while. People would do food trucks. Why can you do a food truck? Because a truck costs $20,000. In Singapore, the bloody truck costs you $200,000, <laughs> right? So if you can do a food truck that costs you 20K, what's a food truck where you start at 200K, you're down 200K, how, how many bowls of 
nasi padang or how many bowls of beef rendang or how many cocktails do you have to stir from the bloody truck to be able to uh, to make your money back? Yeah. And that is and the answer to that is maybe, you know, 800 more a day or like 8,000 more in your lifetime or whatever. It's exponential, right? And so, I mean, I think when we talk about F&B, you also have to look at it from the unique context of what Singapore course, is, right? Because you can now go and bid for a hawker store and you can bid for a hawker store and the bloody hawker store costs $6,000 or $7,000 a, yeah. um, a month. And you say, how many bowls of nasi lemak does uncle have to sell before he can? And then at that point, the person who's paying for that is probably not uncle, it's probably yeah. a gang ho like 20-something yeah, yeah, yeah. year old who's like, no, Because uncle is it. on the, in the old scheme, yes. right? So but yeah. if you look at, okay, if you read eight days, uh, Why well, are you reading eight days? No, it's uh, like eight days eats. I mean, they <laughs> okay, are a bit okay. more viral uh, on Instagram and all that. You'll see because we follow them. Yeah, we follow. Okay, like, yeah. I mean, as in F and B, you have Hoping to see, that right? They will feature us as yes, well. Also. But you always see a uh, young person close after three months. After one month of running the store, there I'm like, right. what the hell? You want no staying power? You close after three months or one year, and then clearly you also just couldn't. Fact to your point. What were your projections? Oh, I was going to sell 200 bowls of rice a day, so I definitely can make money. What you didn't factor in is not just whether two people will buy 200 bowls of rice. Can you cope with making 200 bowls of rice or not? Or are you like, by the end of it, sure, you sell 200 bowls of rice, sure, you make a $500 profit. But oh my God, you go home, you conk out, and then you wake up next morning, you're like, oh my God, I have to sell another 200 bowls of rice. Right? So Yeah, but in the first place, again, what makes you think that you can sell 200 bowls of rice? It is not easy to sell 200 bowls yes. of rice. Interesting. Imagine nice, nice. having to have 200 people like your food Enough. every single day. Yeah. 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 Fair. Fair. That if you were to add point. that number up into a year, I mean, you go to a hawker shop, a hawker, hawker center, right? And you will always see three or four stalls that have a line out the wazoo from here to Timbuktu. Yep. And then the poor shop next to it. It's no Go one. Yeah. And I was, like, I was sitting at a... They, they at, are the ones that I go to because I don't like to yeah. queue. No, so I was sitting next to a chicken rice stall the other day. I, I, was, I was lying up for a chicken rice shop. It was very good chicken rice, by the way. So worth the worth the whatever, five or ten minute wait. La. Then the fruit juice shop next to it was empty. And I'm like, I hope the rental for this is cheaper because I see the poor sod st- standing there looking around. Yeah, just looking at, actually looking looking at the queue. Yeah, yeah, the the shop, like, <laughs> and I can tell you in their mind, they are just cursing and saying, what the fuck, I should have sold chicken rice. Why am I making juice? I mean, not that they could again have do- done chicken rice, but I mean, I'm sure they're not particularly happy either. La. Yeah, yeah, fair, fair. Okay, so m- maybe we want to talk a little bit about the rent side of things. Like, what is the realist the rent? Because I think there's a lot of discussion around like, oh, I you know the landlords are taking all the juice, right? I mean, so I'll, like, I'll spend two minutes on it and then let Park talk a bit more yeah. about it. But I mean, it varies and it's changed a lot, right? I think back in the day, traditionally, you would say that I mean, anything in the CBD is expensive and anything outside of the CBD is uh, cheap. Just, just stereotypically, right? That but was co- really yeah. back in the day. Yeah. 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 But COVID has changed it. I mean, COVID and other things have changed it where now your shop in Tampines or your shop in uh, Jurong or your shop Everything in Everything is Singa consistently is expensive. It's as, as, as expensive yeah. as a city because the demographics have changed. People are now living in satellite towns in Sengkang or in Jurong or wherever and stuff like that. And your um, IMM or your... What are the malls in the West? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know, man. <laughs> Tampines one or, or whatever can be as busy as... A mall in in town la, right yeah. and so then landlords uh, change the times scary. and they suddenly say what was once twelve ten dollars per six dollars per square foot has become twelve dollars per square foot has become twenty two dollars per square foot right now it's about twenty yeah. something. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's to a point where HDB has decided to come in to build commercial buildings again. Uh, that's a story for another day. Yeah, that's a discussion for another day. Yeah, that's a discussion for another day. Yeah, yeah. I mean, to me, the thing is rental always will be an issue. The bigger problem comes whereby I think nowadays... Uh, because, I mean, it sounds like a grandfather's story. La, because I come from... So you my, come from a grandfather yeah, legacy, yeah, yeah. right? Well, my right. mother. Yeah, 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 yeah. Where at one point, it was pretty easy to talk to your landlord. It didn't matter whether your landlord was a big company, like say Fai's organization or whatever, you know. But it was easy to talk to them. It was easy to go up to them and be like, hey, you know what? Uh, things are not looking so good. Help, yeah. You know, I need a bit of help, you know. Could you like, you know, make sure rent is a little bit cheaper or like at least something that can sustain, you know? And they were open to talk. They were open to talk depending on your situation, depending on the type of food. Like if they know that you are likely to succeed, they are open to talk. Whereas nowadays, it's more of a very stri- very simple. Like if, you can't, if you're not going to pay the amount, someone else is going to pay for yeah. it. Right? Yes. And because you have all these people in such a rush to throw their money at the landlord, yeah. 
the landlords are able to just say, oh, like I said, you don't want to pay, someone else will pay. And it's crazy. It is right? crazy. And I don't know where the money is coming from, to be honest, where people are willing to bid for rent, right? I mean, I think I've got one my place my place that's being taken over right now. So my my the rent my rental was at X thousand, someone was willing to pay a thousand more, then the other person said we need to pay a thousand more. And then I'm like, well, are you gonna give me the money or not? I mean, but yeah, I'm just like, where exactly is the money coming said, from? Right? <laughs> right? Yeah. Yeah. So and then it comes to a point whereby what is now considered cheap rent? Mm. I think people no longer have an idea what makes sense anymore. Mm. People don't calculate a business that can be sustainable, mm. right? So if let's say you have location A and location B, location B is say $20,000 and then location A is say $15,000. So people will be like, oh, well, $15,000 is cheap. No, it's not. Just because it's lower doesn't mean it's cheap. Yeah, it's per square right? foot. It's because location, it's not cheap. It's cheap is like 5000 yeah. yeah. or even like 3000 That's cheap. Yeah. So people no longer know what is considered cheap rent or even fair rent, mm. right? But you have to come from it from what do you think you will make, Yeah. right? And again, if you calculate your things whereby, oh, I can make $100,000 a month, you know, Everything without sounds cheap. Yeah, but without a basis <laughs> no, of and how it, you're yeah, going to yeah. make $100,000 a month, then you, you're factoring in what people shove down your throats. And when we used to make $100,000 a month, we were fine. The moment we stopped making $100,000 a month, we were dead. Right. Mm, right? Mm, so, price for perfection. Yeah. Right? You got to be there. Yeah, no, yeah. I mean, at the end of the day, you have fixed costs. You have to build in your fixed costs. So right? a lot of yeah. people, they, when, they, when they think about coming into F&B, they aim for the stars, but they don't know that very few people will reach there. Mm. You know? They can't. They can't hit the yeah. moon. They can't hit the right. atmosphere. They can't hit. They the can't even hit the yeah. trees. And right. it takes a while. Yeah. Even if your food is good, sometimes it takes a while for people to know you. Yep. It takes yeah. a while for people to get to get to like try your food and then go and share with your friend and yeah. tell people yeah. about it. I want to ask a little bit about that because like essentially, the longer it takes for someone to get to know you, then there is a run rate, right? You, yes. You gotta you gotta carry a run rate three months, six months, whatever. I mean, some places have virality lah, so uh. then it depends. So I mean, you've got virality where it's viral and good, and you've got viral where it's viral and like terrible lah, right? So Cedric Rowley, you can go and look at the reviews. I think it's like three point two stars for like a few hundred reviews, right? Because it's like. 80 bucks for like a couple croissants and a couple... I haven't tried it. It's near my house, but I'm like, screw this. I'm not going to try this. It's not even nice in France. Yeah. Just saying. So, I mean, you know, people have all their... Co- I don't even have to make the comments because the comments are all online versus like, I think I have a... I know someone who does like a champion polo bow and like Dixon Nasi Lemak, right? Oh, she's done great because oh, Dixon she's, Nasi yeah, she's Lemak. been able to yeah. find a niche and say, oh, okay, we can do this. And like, I, I remember I was talking to her about it and she said, wow, people are complaining to me about my na- Nasi Lemak being $9. Mm. But then there's still a line. So clearly it's good enough to pay $9 for that, right? So she's found that niche. She's been able to find that thing and hit that, that point where people are like saying, okay, I'm going to pay $9 for that. I mean, across the street from here, you used to have a coconut, coconut club, club, right? Mm. Coconut club was packed. And I can see your point about location. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It didn't matter. It was always packed. Then a Japanese restaurant moved in after that, Bokashi or something like that, closed within like a year, right? Mm. So it doesn't matter again about, to a certain extent, the location or it, or the concept it's like is your food good and if it's good people are going to pay $19 for that nasi lemak and it was still packed and I was willing to go because the food was actually quite good so from time to time I would go there makan la, yeah right? shout, shout out to the coconut club guys because I always get free oh so I, good. because because they're closing right yeah and they got this extra you know, oh, not a lot okay, la, okay. like just a few packs like, hey guys you want coconut then you were like no 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 that's that's a running joke amongst the team right yeah, so yeah. But, but yes yes, yes. shout out to them so I, I get it I get it um and maybe last question right around like working capital because I think when, when people are thinking of starting, especially I think for a lot of our listeners, they're more like you, right? Full-time corporate job yep. and then like they got some excess income then the butt itchy, right? Uh, they see a uh, few hundred thousand. Everything the, itchy. Uh, the itchy. Then like, wow, maybe uh, hey, three of us start a restaurant together la, or three of us start but right, right? That's, yeah, the, yeah. that's the narrative. Yes, don't do it. That is the <laughs> Stay narrative. away. That's the narrative. The yeah, butt yeah. itchy. Like, hey, not bad lah. We worked hard, man. Let's be yeah, our own yeah. boss. Right? So, so, <laughs> I, I see the face. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so it's like, oh my god, I'm so allergic to this. But uh, if if let's say that's the situation and you were to do it again, you know, f- to advise people on this thing, right? What is the kind of working capital that they should think about? How many months? What 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 are the numbers? Just give us some do you have stuff. Any thoughts first, or? Okay, based on what I have seen over the years, generally speaking, if let's say you want to open a decent looking restaurant right now, if you include about three months of fixed cost, right? And then, of course, you include, I think, the deposits to the landlord, yeah. etc. everything. Renovation. Minimum, uh, minimum, 250. Wow. Minimum. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. And that's not even giving you a really nice looking restaurant. That's just a decent looking restaurant. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. No, renovation costs have gone up a lot also. I yeah. think when we were doing our second place, I didn't realize like, 
I mean, yeah, like COVID really did screw a bunch, a bunch of things up in terms of like renovation costs also. And so that's definitely been affected there. Mm. But once you um, go into the hot kitchen, it's even crazier. Like all the insides, yeah. all, the, all the stuff. Yeah. yeah. But I mean, I think when you look at it from the perspective of working capital, also, I guess going back to that, it's, uh, I mean, Park, Park has a good number, but I'd say anywhere from 250 to 500k actually. I mean, it depends on the concept, right? Mm, mm. I mean, you could also bootstrap it and just like freaking go to, I mean, I don't know. Again, if I wanted to start a concept tomorrow again, which I won't, but if I were to do it again, I actually couldn't start at a hawker, uh, I'll stock it, start at a hawker stall. It doesn't have to be a hawker food, right? I just want to do it somewhere where it's low cost. I can do an MVP and I can at least just try out the thing and see whether or not I'll go and bid for the ones where yeah. you pay $1 yeah, rental yeah, where nobody and wants. Then, yeah. and, then, and then you get the, I mean, you have to pay the cleaning. I, I, I actually fee, agree with right? you. Yeah. you know? That's what I'll do. I mean, the thing is this, just to clarify, I'm not saying 250 and then suddenly every, I don't want people to be like, oh, 250 is a great number, yeah, you know? Yeah. No, 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 no. Because I wouldn't do it for 250. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I'll put it there. 250 is just a number that I more or less know is out there. But if I were to start another restaurant, I wouldn't spend 250 mm-hmm. because I would want to go really cheap on a lot of things. Again, renovation, not a huge thing. Go and for take me. over a space that is, you know? uh, there yeah. is no takeover fee or right. whatever and stuff like that. So everything is again, there, right? I think a lot of times why this number even exists is because people are too ambitious, mm-hmm. right? They want to start with something already like big, big, big and work. Yeah. yeah. So if you were to spend 250 on a restaurant, you better be full house from the first day you open your so, shop. No, that, I mean, that's <laughs> actually a very valid point right? because I think I, my thought around it is that you say you want to have three months of working capital to for people to start coming to your place. But if you're thinking about that from the from day one, you're screwed. Mm. You're screwed because you should be packed from day one. Right. If you're not, if, if you're packed from day one and you start to run down I think that's okay because you can try and find a way. Obviously, mm. the initial excitement share will be a bit mm. more popular. There's a bit of a dip, but then you try and get it back out. But if you're going from this, you're going this way, uh, die, die. Mm, mm. You will never gain traction. Correct. You will never be able and to build enough. most of the time, uh, yeah. most people will never be able to build that so-called excitement to even start there. Mm. Yeah. Most of the time, we're talking about what? 95% of concepts, you can tell, you can go on TikTok, la, you can go on you know, Instagram, whatever, but most of the time, People are generally like, you know, people will slowly come and then try and then, you know. So yeah. again, if I were to do it, I would be like, I would agree with him, you know. I would go and bid for the shop that's like $1, you know. Yeah. I want to get my cost as low as possible to just let people try my food first. Yeah. And then you move in and you say, well, right. the, the pot was so, or maybe it doesn't have to be pot. the cake was so good. So then the cake, now I can open another yeah. shop. So take, like, take over the store next to you, yeah. there's also $1. Yeah. So now your fixed cost is $2. For yeah. Nice. <laughs> Are there still areas around there? Yeah. Like yeah, well, there are actually plenty. Because like, all even, the coffee shop beating yeah. run, right? No, yeah. Even I was, shop looking, shop. I, was even, I was even looking yeah. at Amoy. I think there was like one, even though Amoy is popular because of the, there were a couple of shops that like, were on their second bid, which means when the second bid means no one actually bid for mm. the, the first round, right? And, uh, you, you definitely can find th- those pockets. So it's not to say that you ca- you can't uh, mm-hmm. find find these things, uh, right? At the end nice, of the day. nice. I like the MVP idea. Essentially, yeah, yeah. it's like taking a lot of startup, techie, yeah, like, I mean, way, my, of, that's my background, way of... Right? So, yeah, yeah. No, no, yeah. But, but I think yeah. I think there's validity in that. Especially when you are, you got an intense full-time job yeah, yeah, and then yeah. you want to kind of manage the risk yeah. and all not that. Even if you are doing it as a full-time job and you're so passionate about it and you say, I have the perfect meatball recipe, still try it from like the... You don't go and open it at a uh, nice quick one and then you pay like 20k in rent and then you say, oh, everyone will come and eat my meatball and mm. I'm going to be able to sell uh, 200 bowls of uh, $10 meatball a day. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah. I get it. I get it. I agree. Yeah. It's essentially why I started at Golden Mile. Yeah. I ran this small little office at the top, yeah. you know, 500 bucks and yeah. you just kind of keep it as lean and then just kind of get yeah. it going. Nice. Yeah. Thanks, guys. Thanks. Thank you. Thank I you. hope you will see your next <laughs> iteration. There's no iteration, <laughs> but you should. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah I'll yeah, come yeah. buy my glassware after this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay, okay. Let's chat. Let's chat. And if, if anybody wants to connect with you guys, like where can they connect with you? How, how do they... For me, LinkedIn. Yeah, yeah. He's super, super active on LinkedIn. Yeah, yeah. for me, it's a, Come to the restaurant and eat. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You'll see me there, you know. Just come and look for part. Yeah, right. yeah. take that as a consultation fee. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. At, at least you get to eat the consultation fee. Yeah, exactly. That is, that exactly. is good. Yeah, that is good. Yeah, yeah. Thank you for your time. Yeah. Thank you. Like, Thanks, enjoy, guys. You. See Thank ya. You. Bye. Thanks.